those two plates is where the volcanism happens and where all the basalt erupts. And so these denser oceanic plates and ocean basins is, um, let's see how to word this. It's been a long time since I've talked about this. It's, um, hmm. So, so they're kind of like the first or the sort of primary volcanism. You can get that easily by melting a little bit of the upper mantle. But in order to get continental crust, you have to keep refining and refining and refining it. So you have to keep recycling material. So you have to, in order to get large quantities of continental crust, which has sort of a baseline of an andesitic type composition. So it is more, it has a lot more silica in it than the basaltic rocks of the ocean basins. Um, in order to get that in more than minute quantities, you have to have some form of plate tectonics and subduction of plates to then continue recycling and enriching magmas in silica to form continents. And then these continents are less dense than the oceanic crust. And subsequently, um, when you have subducting plates at a convergent plate boundary, um, the oceanic plate, which is denser, will go underneath the continental plate and hence continues in a very broad, very simplistic sense, our plate tectonics. What about where there are ocean basins that aren't bordered by subduction zones? I mean, right. still the same process. But let's see, where name one that uh, isn't bordered by Europe. us. So Europe has convergent plate boundaries. So is it the Alps, the Matterhorn? Yep. So that is a convergent boundary right there. That's the African plate and the uh, Euro Eurasian. Eurasian plate are colliding. So I forget which one is on top, but part of the Matterhorn is one plate and part of the Matterhorn is like a little bit of accretion of the other plate. So, but, but when you're talking about the border between the ocean basin and the continent, that convergent, uh, that convergence is on land, right? Oh, so, come on. so the, the ocean basins, um, let's see, there's a difference between ocean basins and the continents versus um, continental tr crust and oceanic crust. So uh, the plates will have both on them. So I'm not describing this very well. So if any of the others want to jump in and help me with a better way of describing this, I am not very good with words, especially at 2 a.m. Um, 3 a.m. Oh, is it 3 a.m.? It's almost it's 3. 3 now. Even earlier. I mean, well, my goodness, later in the morning. Um, You're doing great. Yeah, this is good. As you as you smile and laugh at me, what? I see this. I'm not I laughing at you. Um, I don't know enough I'm to supportive. laugh at you for those answers. <laughs> yeah. I have a degree in geology, and I am asking these questions. Okay. So that's you know, this is not. I like I was a wondering if you were quizzing us back no, here. No, no, these are legitimate <laughs> questions that yeah. I never felt like I uh, got fully answered when I was at school, yeah. mm -hmm. and I, I like I understand you know the spreading zones and oceans and I understand subjection zones and I understand like a lot of plate tectonics but what I've never been able to wrap my brain around is like on the east coast of the United States it's continental and then there's a shelf break and then there's a basin and then there's a spreading ridge in the middle and I so there's a density transition but why there used to be a convergent plate boundary on the east coast so it is no longer there. It's about, uh, I want to say, it's more than 400 million years old. I'm not, don't quote me on that. But yeah. so the very edge of where I used to live, 
um, in South Carolina. Um, some part of that area was actually uh, an island arc. Yeah. And so that then crashed into what uh, was then the mainland part of America. And so all of that is now together. Ooh, wait, well, and oh, so the zoom. Ooh, nice. Nice. Cool jellyfish. Hey, buddy. Hello, hello. Can we get a close up on you? Good job, Ryan. Do something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think a lot of the areas that have more complex features have old features of either subduction or, you know, just regular mountain building convergent type uh, margins. So is the continental shelf then something that just forms through yeah processes come on oh thank oh you are right thank you what's that no i said thank you to ryan <coughs> oh sorry <coughs> ryan makes me look good like it's all ryan <laughs> it's actually all ryan <laughs> <laughs> you're both doing great jobs <laughs> as we fly through the sediment but Naya, I'd actually have to look more into that. I'm not quite awake enough. That's okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll pick your brain about it later on. Sure thing. Also, where in South Carolina did you live, Amber? So it's a uh, place called Aiken, South Carolina. Oh, yeah. I went to College of Charleston. Oh, well then. Really? I sure really? did. Really? Yeah. I toured there, but I ended up going... Uh, to undergrad in the upstate, a little private college called Furman University. Okay. Kind of near Clemson, but kind of not. <laughs> yes. Nice. Ooh, do I see rocks? I they're know. not my kind of rocks, but they're rocks. <laughs> That's a hard substrate of some sort. <laughs> <laughs> In the chat, someone named Steven is asking, does our site in Kingman Reef have pillow lava? Mm -hmm. mm. Great question. So this dive site, I didn't see any because I think we might have been more so in the carbonate for much of our time. Um, other parts over here definitely have pillow lavas. And as for seafloor spreading, nearby, and when I say nearby, I mean within a thousand kilometers, <laughs> there was ancient spreading. Now, whether or not Kingman Reef was here at that point and possible interactions and whatnot is one of the things we are trying to actually study here, which is why I am trying to get some good volcanic material to date them. And the C4 spreading, spreading is based on the, what, like, how does that happen, C4 spreading? So C4 spreading is a divergent plate boundary. So um, you're literally taking two plates and they're ripping apart mm. from each other. And then in that gap between them, you have decompression melting. So what the is pressure that? is lessened in between them. So the hot material that is underneath will melt, rise up, mm. and it'll form new crust in that gap. And so those plates are kind of being pulled apart from each other at either end, because on the other side, you can't just keep producing and producing and producing more crust. You have to recycle it at some point. So then at the edges, uh, particularly if you think about uh, Pacific Ocean, mm -hmm. so you know the ring of fire. So on the edges on the other side there you've got subduction zones so that oceanic mm, plate yeah, that is being it. formed at that those divergent plate boundaries is then sinking Oops. underneath and so constantly being recycled yes, oh there's quite a little <clears throat> bit of biology on that little rock yeah, outcropping crinoids a small black oh, coral yeah. and maybe a coralomorph 
I mean, yeah. pull it on you or that's my current? I gotta go. Sorry. Never mind. No worries. Have any of you ever found fossils while searching the seafloor? In fact, that well, we that did. Mm -hmm. In our in our last rock samples, we saw some uh, fossil coral. Yes. Yes. Really? Ooh, rock pen. Yeah. Sea pens. Oh, is that a fish or is that yeah. a shark? Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to be a tiny, shark. Tiny, tiny one. The last dive had a cat bitty shark. Bitty. Ooh, and a rock pen. And uh, an urchin. Those are sea pens, not rock pens. Oh, whoops. Yes. I just really want some rocks, apparently. <laughs> Even my subconscious. <laughs> Do we have any coins in the Zoom bank? Yeah, I'm working on setting it up. Ooh, there's really, really something around here. Video zoom. Nice. Hmm. Who are you? I can't quite tell. He's either missing a half or he's just chilling on the seafloor. You just can't see the other fins on the other side? Okay. I can't quite Alive. tell how large his eyes were either. I came up a bit. I'm going back down. Anyway, did that answer your question, Gabby? Oh, that was, yeah. Oh, no. I, oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. I sparked the uh, Why? curiosity with all the Why geology Why am I talk. getting geology questions this early in the you're morning? you're the expert, honey. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm an expert in nothing <laughs> this early in the morning. I have had a little bit of instant coffee, and that is it. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> Let's oh, did somebody see. say ew? <laughs> That's an appropriate response. <laughs> As someone that also had it this morning out of desperation. <laughs> yes, too early to try and use any sort of machinery to make my coffee. Ooh, or one, even just to filter and make drip coffee. One of the other watches has a slick uh, instant coffee, like whip it up. Oh, I was going to do that this morning. And the, then when I woke up, I was like, no. Are you talking about Delgona coffee? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's way Sorry. too much Perhaps. effort this early in the morning. <laughs> Maybe right. before the next 12 before walk. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this geology question was, when the Mediterranean was dried out, what happened? A fake. Because know. Africa and Eurasia were moving together and closed the Strait of Gibraltar but then it opened again, even though Eurasia and Africa are still moving towards each other. Why did it open? Um, I am not actually sure too much about the tectonic setting of the Mediterranean area. Um, I know it's pretty complex, and I know that there is, I think, the East African Rift is trying to open and I think that might have actually been a third arm of some seafloor spreading, but don't quote me on that. Mm -hmm. um, so that little area has some complexities in it that um, I do not Gosh. actually remember off of you. the top of my head. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a pretty pet question. So you guys have officially stumped me. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> we thank At you, At 3 a.m. <laughs> Stump the side. I would play that game. I yeah. need to brush up on my plate tectonics. Mm -hmm. I will do so before the next watch. <laughs> Good. I'll ask more questions. Oh, boy. <laughs> Is it the, you said the East African Rift? Yes. That's like uh, Tanzania, Great Rift Valley, right? It. Is that part of it? Mm. The Turkana Basin, like Victoria. Yeah, like yeah, all yeah, those. yeah, yeah. Victoria Falls. Gage is good. What's I on your mind? Gage is really like to go there. Yep. I haven't done them yet, but uh, 18 after is the time. Oh. Neo, were you asking about? 
continental shelf earlier? I was, yeah. Um, what was the question? Uh, it wasn't a particularly well-formed question, but my question is, in, in, in generally speaking, we have ocean basins and we have continents, and there's a density change between the two, uh, and we, f we make new crust in the middle of the ocean, but then not all of the oceans end with a subduction into a, con a continent. And I am wondering how the transition between continent and ocean over the continental shelf is triggered and formed without the, the mechanism of like a subduction without zone a subduction or event, yeah okay. like like why do those transitions Ooh. exist um hold that and why are they where they are kind of it's very broadly like why do we have oceans basically <laughs> <laughs> well i don't know if this is really answering your question but one way i think about it is that um water is going to go to the the lower point. So basalt being much more dense is going to be the place that the water is, is going versus the continental crust, which is higher. Mm -hmm. zoom in. And the continental slopes, um, ugly. Come on. or the continental shelves, excuse me, are extensions of the continent. Itself. Yeah, it's continental crust. The it, uh, it, rivers it and everything are taking material and kind of building that area up. So then when you go like shelf slope. The shelf break is where there's the transition. And so what triggers, so. You're, you're asking kind of like what, what happens at the break. Yeah. Yeah. At the break? at the shelf break like why like w how did the transition between the continental crust and the oceanic crust how is that transition when there is not a subduction zone is that the question yeah and like what what f forms what triggers that transition like if the continent is building sediment out into the ocean does that mean the ocean is always like beneath the continent? Like why? Ooh, that was a good one. Yeah. <coughs> Raj. Um, also, not to take away from this very thrilling conversation. <laughs> I'm enjoying it a lot. <laughs> we are directly over Waypoint 7. Perfect. Um, ah. And that would you are. like to proceed? Yeah, can we get a zoom out? Yeah. So we've got this sort of uh, well, rich feature. Yeah. Uh, we can climb up just straight towards Waypoint 8. Uh, there's some pretty good slope in between, or we could... Let's go a little bit more to the east than the north, like, to get our way up to 8, so maybe go on that steeper part. Like, right in. Yeah, here. like that, exactly. Okay, yeah, that sounds good. We'll move towards, let's see... We'll call it 080. Perfect. Does that look like what you're looking for, Megan? Yeah, that looks good. Cool. And then we can kind of go up along the, the side of it. Yeah. Zero, like zero. Okay. I'm bringing my head around. Odd. Nia, uh, someone in the chat says to look up the Mycenaean salt crisis to learn about what you were asking. Uh, I think that was actually more so for me, for yeah. the Mediterranean plate tectonics uh. and the uh, closing of the Gibraltar Strait, Strait of Gibraltar. There we go. Video zoom. Ooh. Is that a floating holothurian? I can see sediment in its belly. Yeah. That's what it looks like to me. Taking a nice little walk after mm -hmm. eating all that food. 
I like how the only thing that I can see is the sediment inside. Mm -hmm. It's just a floating it, little a floating rope tube of sediment. Of sediment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's very slow. Yeah. Thank you for sharing the information about the Messinian salt crisis. She is looking it up. We appreciate your input. Um, science, we're fighting some forces in this direction, just so you know. Come again, Nav? Can you say that again? We're fighting some forces in this direction. Okay. Zero eight zero is almost directly ahead for where we're at right now, uh, and it's the forces were lined up in the forces. Okay. So we're we're fighting a little bit to get this. Okay. Heading, but if that if that's not good, we can we can just go directly towards the waypoint. If that's a better heading. Um. W let Let's. Uh, or split the difference. Once we get some momentum, I think it'll be better. Uh. But we might have to kind of cruise at this bearing. Okay. That's fine. Roger. What's that? I can hear you less and less and less and less. I don't know why. I have you all the way maxed. Okay, say it again. Uh, yeah. Uh, maybe not. I'm not sure yet. I didn't want to do it all at once because you weren't going to be on the screen if I did it. Uh, we're at 060 right now. Uh, Our viewers take, would uh, like to know what forces are we fighting. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, when I say fighting the forces, we line the ship up uh, when we're in so that's a new thing to dynamic have, positioning, um, which is the always computer system needle. that we use to control the it ship's motion year. with it was, extreme it was precision year, while we have the vehicles in the I water. I wasn't out last year. Uh, and when I say we line ago. up into the forces, that means that we take the ship's nose and we put it directly into the strongest force, be it uh, wind, swell, or current, or all of the above. Mm -hmm. um, and that way we can more easily maneuver because um, we're not constantly being blown off course or moved in a specific direction. We can hold straight ahead. And then rather than changing our heading, we generally move the ship bearing in a direction. Uh, and that's how we can keep the vehicles behind us, make sure that we're treating the tether uh, and the 6-8 cable with as much care as possible um, and still have space for Herc to drive around and explore. Got it. Thanks for that. Would a few of you like to share what is your favorite part of this expedition thus far? I think that swimming uh, serianthid mm -hmm. kind of takes the cake now. Mm -hmm. I mean, so far this dive has been great. I got a sample yeah. and I saw a swimming serianthid. Oh. And what is this guy? Is so, this another yeah, fish? Those two things have been my highlight so far. Yeah. We Video also, zoom. we've seen a lot of cool things though, this expedition. Ooh, look at its tail. It shimmers with how mm. it's moving like that. Very beautiful. What type of fish is this? <laughs> That was a great question <laughs> that I don't know the answer to. <laughs> hey, it didn't hurt that. I sadly am not good with my fish. <laughs> it's, it's rare that we have a fish expert, actually. Hagfish, yeah. maybe? But no, I can say hagfish. That's a no. <laughs> I know that one. <laughs> they have a very particular look. Oh, come on. <laughs> I'm going to move on. But...
So we're getting pretty close to another terrace, right? On high pack? Yeah, we are area stepping right up into a, uh, it's an area that could definitely have a terrace. It's hard to know just from mm -hmm. sort of the contours here, but yeah, definitely getting into some super terrain and hopefully it will be another cool rocky outcrop. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. I'm not what sure if I'm holding out hopes for it or not. I think based on our slope map, it's not looking like a terrace to me. I think we passed the main ones mm. before waypoint eight, but it looks like this little stretch is gonna be a little bit less steep and then hopefully we'll, I don't zoom? know if we'll do it on our watch, but there's the little cone at the top. Yeah. I and don't think that'll be on our anything? watch. And then another no. little ledge. There's no way we're going to make it to the cone on our watch unless no. we really start Let's cruising. book it. Oh. <laughs> I do think there is one more terrace, but it's a ways above us here. Come oh, on. We point okay. 10. So this area, if it has a less steep slope, it'll probably stay pretty highly sedimented is going to be my guess. Ooh, Holothurian. Mm-hmm. Ah, that fish from before. I should have known it. Halosaur. Ah, nice. Uh, yeah. Those are quite common. Yeah. I feel like. Yeah. It's a name I should remember. Yeah. It sounds like a dinosaur. <laughs> and yet, yeah. I always forget it. No, yeah, you got that from right here. Mm -hmm. the chat. They always come through. Uh, science, if it's all right, I'm going to give us a bearing just a little bit further towards the north. Yep, that's totally fine. Okay. Great, Jeff. Yeah. Uh, could we step three zero meters bearing zero five zero? Thank you. Zero five zero. Zero five zero, yeah. So amenable. He was like, okay. It's it. very easy going. Love it. Yeah. Alexi's really, really been good. Yeah. When we've been out in these sort of like big swell. Monsters. Yeah. <laughs> and, and trying to uh, map and get like actual useful data. Mm -hmm. I keep going up to the bridge and like talking it out with him and he's been like really communicative. I like that. Yeah. And he's, he's got a n really nice disposition for this work and job and stuff. Very mellow. Yeah. Mellow on the bridge is like chef's kiss. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In general, I think Nautilus Bridge pretty mellow. Yeah. Every time I go up there, it's like... They have to balance the forces. Yeah. So they have to be mellow so that good versus forces, you know. <laughs> you know? Yes. Yeah, we, well, the, th the thing is we, I, I was going to bring it up, but it didn't make sense to do that because it had already moved. Oh, we would have wanted true. to kind of do it maybe before I realized. Like while the sample was yeah. still in the thing, we had to put yeah. it away. Yeah, yeah, but that's okay. And we didn't have our arms, so it was, our order of operations could have been different, but that's okay. Gabby, you'll get on SPL? Yeah. Sorry about that. No worries. Yeah. We were just chatting about a Niskin that we had dreams about what, doing. What might have been. 
Yes. Next but time. but we got the more important samples. But hey, so. honestly, we got it started was flying and I forgot about that nest yeah. immediately. <laughs> I was thinking like, oh gosh, we can't fly over this thing and <laughs> pop a nest in. I was <laughs> transfixed by its luminous beauty. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It was really radiant. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. For anyone listening that's not sure, a nest in is a water sample. That's right. We'd say pop in a skin, we mean pop a bottle, take the water right where it is. We have that depth, that location, that eDNA. Yeah. And environmental DNA. And we can tell what was in the area. Anybody on the front row want to share their favorite part of the expedition so far? Nia? I mean, I it take a lot for me to disagree with other, what everyone's already said. The Cerianthus was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. So that's the superstar of the expedition. Yeah. As far as imagery goes, that was awesome. As yeah. far as ops go, I like all of our launches and recoveries. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I mean it genuinely. We're, I think we've gotten quite good at that. Also. <laughs> because Told it makes us watch. skilled people at what we do That's when true. it's like a little bit hairy. <laughs> no, I like them a lot too, actually. Yeah, uh, there's so many things to think about and so many variables. It's kind of like exactly what, yeah. what we do. I liked, I like the flying sample too. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. that was cool. Yeah. That yeah. was super fun. I want to do more of those. My first coral sample. Baby's first coral sample. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Should make a children's book of it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Put it on the to-do list. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a children's book author for a friend. Who? Jess did a little children's book. I am unaware. You've seen her little like cartoon illustrations from here? No, no. I know her poems, but not her oh, yeah. art. One of, wait, one of them is the rock, or the geologist on a date with a rock. <gasps> is it? Yeah, yeah, you have to see her cartoons. They're <laughs> a riot. Oh, I haven't seen them. Okay. Yeah, they, she, I think, and her sister made a little children's book. I love Cute. that. Yeah. I have the Ropos children's book. Stop, there's a Ropos children's book? Yeah. What? Yeah. Wait, seriously? Yeah. I don't know if it's like Ropos's children's book, but it's like a scientist from UW wrote a book about a robot named Ropos. So huh. I mean, that's what it sounds like. It checks book. out. There, <laughs> there, there, there is a robot. There is a robot. Yeah. Named Ropos. Yeah. So I'm like, <laughs> I can only assume it's the same. It's one of the same. Yeah. But there it's just really aren't cool. That many of those. It's really cool. That's wild. Yeah. I did not. I. Under the circumstances, I figured I would have heard about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then there's the Alvin um, children's book, like Flying in the Deep or something like Ooh, that. That's I what it's called. I didn't know about that either. Sounds yeah. like I need to go buy some children's books. Yeah. I was looking for them <laughs> so that when I did it outreach, I could like have things to pass around. And the it's, it's, it's like, yeah, people Is are wrong? I want them for myself. educated and know how to communicate science to kids. So I was like, if I could just put the resources in front of them. Ooh, no, Kylie, no need we to gotta reinvent get the you wheel. In. Just give them the tools, right? Mm -hmm. Kylie, Absolutely. I'm also bringing you to Alexander Elementary. Okay. Ooh. Talking Ooh. about children's books. Yeah. Yes. Start them young. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> if I, I mean, I only discovered this as like a field in general that existed when I was 25. So. If we can start them much younger, they can get much further. And That's then our totally technology agree. can advance and our science can get done and um, in, a, in an exponential growth sort of way. Yes. Roger. Indeed. I'm yeah. all for paying into that, um, like enriching the future workforce sort of deal. There's just a lot of smart folks that have never heard of yeah. what we do. Now, we have a, a viewer asking, what are your scariest slash spooky stories from an expedition? 
Oh. I don't think I've been out enough to have one. Hmm. Can the Ooh. red put it in the bird be a scary thing? Yeah, that, that was, was pretty frightening. Pretty spooky. Yes. Like the hills have eyes, but <laughs> <laughs> the hills have boobies. <laughs> So for those of you who ask, you can, you can check our social media platforms and read about the red-footed boobies, even though there are different variations of that bird, um, to hear the stories. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of a, another like spooky scenario that's happened at sea. What about when Argus and Herc became benthic? Yeah, that was spooky coming up <laughs> on yeah. them out of the Ugh. mists. It was very like spooky. It still gives me chills. That was icky, personally for me. <laughs> I didn't like that. I mean, it's not what we gun for. <laughs> yeah, it just like winching it up so sadly and slowly by myself was like, oh. No, but that, that was so. Oh, the everybody left and like went to go ponder what happened. <laughs> oh, when there was nothing on the end of the wire. Yeah, and I'm just oh, sitting up terrible. here like white knuckling the winch. <laughs> <laughs> and so Ed's bad. like, "Oh, you can use like the, the like stick lock." Yeah, the stick lock. And I was like, "This is all I have control over. <laughs> Not let go. <laughs> Don't let go, Jack." Uh, we have about, what, like 37 people on a ship. And when we're not sleeping or on watch, um, people do different things. Like myself as a science communication fellow, we do ship to shore interactions. The scientists, uh, y'all want to tell them what you do when you're not on watch? I sleep. <laughs> no, well, they said other than sleep. <laughs> we played that game. We played I, board games sometimes, and I saw a movie <laughs> the other day. <laughs> yeah, we got a lot of Wordle going around the ship right now. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, Everywhere yeah. When I get off, yeah, when I get off watch, I'm going to tackle the next Wordle. Yeah. <laughs> I was a really big fan of Epoxy. Yeah. Oh, that my good goodness. One. Me and my yes. friend, I, like, got it really soon, and she was like, I can't get it. Oh, that's so not the fair. reason I got it quickly is because whenever I'm trying to figure out a word, and I don't have a letter. I, I have all the positions of things, but like I'm missing a letter. I put an X in. And oh. I didn't have the X, and I just like put the X in. I was like, ding ding, that's a word. You oh told God. me that trick, and I started doing it, and that's why I got epoxy. Also. You see, I got close. My last guess was epoch. Oh, oh there's word. the geologist. <laughs> <laughs> Wordle brings us all together. <laughs> and then there's, uh, I always mess up how to say this world. Wordle? Yeah. Well, there's also absurdal, like which squirtle. is <laughs> adversarial <laughs> wordle, and quartal, which is you have to solve four like wordles at the same time, which I've Trevor does. I've been playing seven oh which is seven words. Oh, Seven my sets of words. So it's actually 14 words. Good Are they Lord. related it's words? It's actually really fun because you can just say anything you want, yeah. and then one of them is like, yeah, there's a letter. <laughs> like, it's what, what, what's that one called? Setacordal. Setacordal. Okay. Wow. All right. We're going to be looking all these up. <laughs> that is what we're going to be doing besides eating, sleeping, and being on our watch. <laughs> you have your answer. Yes. <laughs> oh. Ooh, fish. So still. Zero two five. Roger. Uh, and that is going to put us a little bit more lateral to the slope perk, just for your awareness. Lateral. I'm going to be coming around. Me too. Okay, that sounds good.
Well, this is an interesting question. Um, is this current location a good place to look for recently arrived meteorites? Or does this mean that the sediment gets covered over very quickly? I've actually been thinking about that question for the last few minutes since <laughs> I looked over and saw it. I made it. I would think that, that would be, yes, <laughs> a needle in a haystack sort of scenario. I said I made it around. They're really okay. easy to find in places Press like Antarctica just because they're very easy to spot on top of the ice. Um, we but need our down cosmic here, dust curator to chime in. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Keeping an eye on it. It feels like it. It's working hard. <laughs> okay, let's. Uh, I think the solution to that is just not um, letting the funny. moves run out. Maybe. Do you see um, the <laughs> What was the septawortle version called again? It's called setaquortle. <laughs> They're it's looking really it fun. up right now. I highly recommend. <laughs> Someone says, yeah, it's not fair at all to play Scrabble-like games with scientists. Hey, it's completely <laughs> fair. When you get hard to find words, all of us will have a different answer, and one of us will end up getting something. I don't know. Do Team. Latin names count? <laughs> <laughs> I have found that more obscure words tend to not get me as far in the Wordle games. Mm. That's, true. That's true. Also, five letters really limits your your vocab. It does. I feel a little bit dumb when I play Wordle. <laughs> Just a tad. There's a sea urchin. Oh, looks like we're going to come up on some rocks, possibly. <gasps> rocks? <laughs> Based on the little purple in our slope map and yeah. the sonar. Maybe. What does your say? Ah, look. Okay. Do you refresh it? Uh, science? Yes. I'm going to keep us moving uh, at 0 0.2 knots for a little while since we're looking at some forces kind of in our uh, in our bearing that we're moving at. OK. So let me know if we want to stop or slow down and, and try to give me just a little bit of a heads up. Sounds good. Yeah, we can just keep going. OK. That's can good. we zoom real quick on that fish or no? It's OK if we can. And I won't ask what type it is. <laughs> <laughs> we won't know until we get a close up anyway. Ooh. It is the same type though. It looks the same. Someone says it's called a tripod fish. 
might be. Ooh, C pen. <laughs> oh, there's a rock. Oh. That's what we've been seeing in the sonar. Very sediment covered. Yep. Well, I don't think there's any loose rocks for me to grab here. <laughs> it doesn't look like it. It doesn't look um, also doesn't look like what I want. either. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> no problem there. I can hope. I can dream. Is that another fish off to the right? Looks like it. It's another halosaur, maybe. So. Maybe. Its tail is, is doing, doing the a whole eel-like movement. Or I could be completely seeing things. Oh, I think I see no, what I you're see seeing. Okay. And there's a urchin off to the right. Yeah. And a little sea pen. Another urchin. Yes. Three of them. So cute. Very spiny urchin. Nice. Mm. Can we also get a zoom on the rock and the sponge, I guess, as well? Ooh, is that a oh, sponge yeah. on the sediment on top of the rock and another sea pen? Yeah. Ooh. And maybe a whip coral? Oh, uh, yeah, maybe. Looks like it. Oh, no, that's not a sponge, that's a... Oh! A holothurian? Hello, oh, oh goodbye. Looks like a holothurian. Yeah, Yeah, holothurian. I am wrong. And there's a little burrow right there, too. That's cool looking. Ooh, and sediment ripples. Oh, and that's another coral. There's a yellow one. Hmm. Ah, and back into the land of sediments we go. <laughs> Raj, yeah. Uh, someone would like to know, how about, um, is there watches for the bridge and data lab and change of the captain driving the Nautilus? Yeah. Yeah, yeah there are. Good question. For the data lab, it's a yes. For the bridge, I actually don't know how they do there, things. So the bridge has, a, they have a watch schedule that's that mirrors ours. So each of our watch that we do, like 12 to 4, has a mate on the bridge that drives. So our mate is Alexi. He's driving right now. Oh. Uh, and then the captain comes on for launches and recovery and kind of other um, more operationally complex things. And then otherwise he sort of monitors uh, and, and, you know, runs the show. Uh, and then the data lab, it, it depends on the role. But no is the quick answer. The data lab is generally, if we're not mapping, uh, like the mapping coordinator and the data engineers work in there, but they have more of a self-structured schedule. So they just get the work that they need to get done, done, and, you know, work with the rest of us as needed. Mm. That was a good question. Yeah, typically when we're talking about a watch, we're 
especially for the science team where we're talking about when we're diving. Um, but for the for the data engineers, when there's more than one of them, they usually decide to kind of somewhat split up the day so that one of them is around in the evening and one is more around in the morning. Mm. Another Holothurian off into the distance <laughs> in the sea of sediment. Yeah, video zoom. like light purple little blobby guys. Yeah, that looks like <laughs> blobby. Little... Does not look similar to the one we saw before. Yeah, yeah I feel like we've seen a couple mm -hmm. like this. Yeah. Maybe it's the same one. Okay. He's <laughs> really, really fast. He's just a <laughs> speedy fellow. <laughs> this guy is everywhere. For a second, I was like, yeah, it's probably the same type. I and mean, then I like register that you meant the I exact mean, he's same. Got a <laughs> private jet now. <laughs> <laughs> he has his own little Somewhere. ROV and we just don't know it. Oh, <laughs> nice. Is that a small solitary rock up ahead or is that another critter up off to the left? Everyone's favorite question to ask in sediment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's oh, a critter. It's another critter. Big boy. Oh, right. but the other one is out of frame now, so it could be the same one. It's, nope, it's not. An He's Argus. in my brow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can see <laughs> A clone, maybe? Video zoom. This one looks a bit different. Big pores. Huh. <laughs> Skin care routine needs work. Come wide. <laughs> <laughs> awfully hard on the, on the critters, Kylie. <laughs> <laughs> no one told him to get ready for his close up. <laughs> We came into their house <laughs> uninvited. <laughs> you want them to be photo ready? <laughs> Little did you know this is a handsome Othuria. Almost 4 a.m. shenanigans. Nobody, Ooh, nobody told the them that he was going to have an interaction <laughs> today. <laughs> Didn't put it on the whiteboard. It's been like, oh my God, there's like another. Years. Oh my goodness, there's another one. <laughs> Since the last another clone. Video zoom. You know what we haven't seen on our watch yet? Mm. A Chana cops. Mm. Oh, that's right. A what? A Chana Cops. <laughs> what is that? What letters are you using? <laughs> <laughs> All of them. <laughs> I thought you were doing Wordle. <laughs> <laughs> that is more than five. <laughs> <laughs> like, I couldn't understand if it was a C-H or a J. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe both. <laughs> C 
C-O-P-S. C-O-P-S. Starts with a T. Ton of coffee. <laughs> 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 there's a P on the front. Yeah, there's a T, a P, and then a C. K, A. But Tachonica. What is going on here? It's a really high, high value Scrabble word. <laughs> I mean, honestly. Oh, though. boy. Oh. <laughs> he thinks the whole He's tired of us. <laughs> does not want to be filmed any longer. <laughs> he heard from his friend about uh, the Ah, he's about to start flying, maybe? No? Yeah, he's having a movement. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he is. He definitely is. <laughs> all right now i think we have used up all the coins in our in our <laughs> i don't think we have i think he wants a stylo <laughs> come on <laughs> it's a hybrid swimming mechanism <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna move on. Roger. Right. Oh. Roger. Uh, can we zoom out a little bit on high pack just to see? Oh yeah, of course. Are we gonna get any more purple instead of green as far as our slope? I don't think no. so. No, we're, we're topping out. Topping out, Roger. There we go. I see, okay. Crinoid? Is that crinoid? What is this? Uh, maybe another umbelula. Oh, well, one time I say a science thing. <laughs> <laughs> Can we do a quick zoom? <laughs> I'm trying. Hold on. <laughs> Can you say the name of it again? Is it crinoid? Umbelula. Oh, sorry. Umbelula. <laughs> <laughs> the actual umbelula. umbelula. Would you like me to spell it? <laughs> yeah. You <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't start with a Q. <laughs> no, it's U-M-B-E-L-L-U-L-A. -L -L okay, it um really does have all those syllables. <laughs> Umbalula. <laughs> Roger. It's a mouthful. All those L's? <laughs> Umbalula. <laughs> is it like, is there an umbilical root there, or is, am I reading too far into this? I have no idea. Um, I bet there is. I would buy <laughs> that. Right. Some but kind you of know, a it sounds like a great. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay, come on. Thank you. Oopsies. I don't think I made that motion over there. <laughs> I don't think I did that at all. It was that Holothurian that was mad at you still. I mean, maybe I did, but could've. I could have. But it's like you have horse. I'm so you, far from it. Did you back up? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not really. Not much. I mean, it might have, it's probably me, but... <laughs> the, the implications of it not I being mean, you <laughs> are wild. <laughs> <laughs> like, what is down here? Yeah. <laughs> it really, like, kind of has to be you. <laughs> I, am I the drama? I know. <laughs> um... Yeah, I, was, I mean, it prob it's probably the thruster. It's probably, you probably backed up or something? It was just the way that it looked was like, it looked like something moved that yeah, was like I mean, in the sediment also could have and been disturbed that. it. Yeah. yeah, totally. If 
there was an earthquake under the ocean close to the dive site, would it affect the ROV? That's a good question. What was the question? If there was an earthquake close to our dive site, would it affect the ROV? Oh. I think that depends. Yeah. It, yeah, it definitely depends on what causes it and what kind of earthquake it is and... Where we are, how like close we are, how deep we are. If a chasm opens beneath it, <laughs> <laughs> swallow it whole. Um, so if it's something like like a volcano or something, like that can have like pretty um, like crazy impacts on the water column. Gabby, are you on SPL? Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. I, am. I couldn't hear you. I um, however sorry. wasn't. <laughs> What's I that? Go ahead, I'm sorry. Um, like if you're at like a place where the, the water column isn't stable, you can cause it to like a bunch of gases to come out of solution. Mm. Um, it can make it very hard for like your buoyancy to be right. Oh, that's interesting. Or yeah. the ship's buoyancy to be right. Um, Oof. and, um, let's see, I guess, I don't, I don't know. It depends on how close it is, maybe how much energy is released, but I guess I can imagine a scenario where like a lot of energy being released, like disrupts, like could break things. Um, mm -hmm. Especially like glass or something. Um, I don't know. I don't think it would be a great thing to be around for. Uh, <laughs> I don't think we would notice any tsunamis or anything like that. They tend to be pretty, kind of just a roll, pretty a low. Swell. Yeah. I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't know if we'd know or not. It would depend on a lot of factors. <sighs> thanks, thanks. There are. Umbalua. 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 <laughs> <laughs> All right, it looks like we are approaching our Umbalula. watch change. <laughs> Umbalula to you too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, All right. Well, well, thank you so much for tuning in to Nautilus Live. The 12 to 4 watch has come to a close, and we will now begin a transition. The next Science Communication Fellow will be Ms. Dejana. Thanks, everybody. Signing off.
What's that? Yeah. Fifty meters away. Mm. Oh, it's behind you? What? No, you don't want to go that way. Don't want to go that way. So zero nine zero. There it is. Um, if you need this lateral, if you want. Sam, are you there? Can I change the ship bearing to zero nine zero, please? Roger, zero nine zero. Uh, how far would we like to go? Fifty meters. Bridge nav. Five zero meters bearing zero nine zero. Okay. So Is it possible to put, uh, can you put an orbit in PC4, Tammy? Uh, or not an orbit, sorry. I'm just not waking up yet. Still can. I don't know if you got it there. I'm going to put uh, 4K up if you're all right with that. H21. Lateral right. I have to wait for the ship there. Definitely have to wait for the ship. Moves underway. Roger. Do uh, 20 meters at uh, 135. 2135. Right. Bridge nav. We're deviating for the uh, sonar target, Steve. Hopefully 20 meters, bearing 135. Hmm. Yeah, I was going to put it up there so Antonella could see it. Uh, yeah, it still can. Uh, yeah, it called still can.
Roger. She'll have to do the same thing I did. Dan, what are you trying to get us towards? So in our targets. What are you seeing? Sonar targets. <laughs> Any sonar targets? Any sonar targets. That sounds good. Where are sonar targets at one three five? Or you're you're saying hopeful sonar targets? What's that? Are you saying hopeful sonar targets? No, there are sonar targets there in Herc and Argus. At one three five? No, we need to move the ship one three five. Got it. Ship's moving. Roger. I see. Are you with me now? Yeah. Can we, uh, uh, can you show me uh, the route that the last couple watches took uh, and where they arrived on bottom approximately? Sure. What was the second question you had? PC2, thank you, Tammy. Do you want more of a zoom, Steve? Yeah. Oops, uh, sorry. Well, um, <laughs> so where do they get on bottom? Probably yeah, around waypoint five yeah. somewhere. Do you have that information? Ah, uh, um, I will not have that information unless. All right, we can look someone it up logged here. it. Yeah, it's gonna be a C log. There now, everyone can see it. I don't have to have that white thing in my face. I can barely hear you, and you're not on SPL. Sorry. Right. Pretty far away, so the light's not great. Yeah, uh, you can. Well, look at that. Is that a whole litharoid? Well, I think so. <laughs> We've been seeing them uh, probably about six or so over the past uh, few minutes since. Uh, got up started to see what's what around this area a lot of these large sea cucumbers they have the ability to swim but they're not true swimming sea cucumbers like the pelagotheria species we've been seeing up in the water column so okay. still sediment we're gonna move on you can zoom out thank you timmy rov have another step zero nine zero roger Zero nine zero should get us where we need to go now. <laughs> Bridge nav. Five zero meters zero nine zero. Supposed sonar rock targets. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Supposed. One can hope. Well, good morning, world. You've got a new watch with you as we um, explore this unnamed seamount that's located 32, uh, about 32 kilometers north of Kingman Reef. I'm sorry, I think that's meters <laughs> north of Kingman Reef. Um, our, our original plan was to go around along a 4.6 kilometer transect upslope. Um, currently, I believe we're at between 17 and 1800 meters 
and we're looking for biological and geological features to help us better understand this area. Specifically hoping to collect some iron manganese crusts. That'll be really uh, informative for our geologists working on that project. And okay. check for other types of biological features as we head up the slope of the seamount. My name's Dejana, and I'm your science communication fellow for this watch, Delta Dan and the Arachnifo van. I think we're gonna have a good time and see some really cool things already. See cucumbers in our first five minutes. Can you go ahead and zoom on this guy, Timmy? Ooh, I can zoom too. Ready for 4K zoom? Yeah. Oops. Let's see how. I'll try to get it. If I can do it slowly here. It's pretty jumpy, no? Yeah, it was the operator. Okay. I got oh, okay. it. Sorry. Do we, can we turn on those porch lights? Oh, no, they're on. Porch lights are. Porch lights are on already. That's okay. probably the problem. This just looks really green. I guess we haven't white balanced it. Oh. It's been white balanced. It's just as we go up. No, we're talking about the, the 4K. 4K. The 4K. Ah. Yeah, it does look a little green. Okay. <sighs> a little leash now. Uh, color control. Well, I'm not here by myself. We have an amazing team with you for the next couple of hours. Um, we'll go ahead, if you've been following all along, hello again. And if you're new to the stream, um, let's go ahead and introduce the team. Why don't we start with you, Jordan? Hello, um, my name is Jordan Akiyama. I'm a public affairs specialist with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service based out of Honolulu, Hawaii. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service does a lot of maintaining and caretaking of the Pacific Remote Island Marine National Monument, uh, which include places like Cayman Reef National Wildlife Refuge and Palmyra Atoll National Wildlife Refuge. So it's good to be here this morning. All right, I'll go. Um, hi, everyone on shore. My name is Steve Oscovich. I'm the watch lead and lead scientist for this expedition. Um, I am a postdoctoral researcher at Boston University where I study deep water corals and seamount ecology. So excited to be down here on the seafloor. Oh, Hopefully com coming up on some uh, nice hard rocky coral and sponge habitat soon in the next few minutes. So we'll see what we see. 10 meters away. Hi everyone. Um, I'm Rebecca Lippitt, sitting in the data logger seat for this watch. I'm a second year PhD student, marine geology at the University of Rhode Island's Graduate School of Oceanography. Um, I'm blue. excited to be here. Hopefully we see some rocks soon. I, I spy something that might be a rock. I spy in my little eye. <laughs> come on, rock. Oh, sorry. I'll come down a bit. Alex. Yay, rocks. <laughs> oh, sorry. And in the front row today, if y'all aren't busy, go ahead and introduce yourselves and tell us a special fact. Should we start with Tammy? Yes. You guys didn't do special facts back there. How come? <laughs> <laughs> we'll circle back to that. Oh, oh okay. Talk it on me. I'm Tammy Gomez. I'm video engineer right now. I'm just pulling a Delta Dan. Uh... <laughs> I had a really good one that I was like, oh, yes, that's what I'm going to say. And then you threw me off by actually asking for it this time. <laughs> <laughs> we might want to look for a loose rock around here. Um, or if something looks loose enough, try to break it. But we'll see what it looks like when I get a little bit closer. But I may want to linger here just for a few moments. Right here. Okay. Got about two zero meters on this move. So let me know if you'd like to stop beforehand. Tammy, can we go for a zoom on this shrimpy guy? Uh, We're just waiting for Argus. Mm. Bye. <laughs> there are quite a few of those uh, Hello sea again. cucumbers hanging about.
you can uh, lateral while you're waiting if you want. There's more rocks to your right. Oh, thanks for the welcome back. <laughs> you. Okay, how do I make this thing not red, Tammy? Manual. Not red. Outdoor auto. There, that's better, eh? Yeah. Outdoor auto. Outdoor auto is going to make it turn bluish green. Yeah. I, I can't function it. It's over my head. I'd have to stick them in the down there and do a... There's some coral. Woohoo! Yeah, there is. There actually might be some nice loose rocks, too. Uh, I don't Looks know. like there's one right, yeah, that yeah. One right there, kind of oh, solo yeah. in between them all. Ooh, yeah. Might be a target. Oh, some questions coming in. Steve, they're wondering about a scale worm that came up last watch. Uh, on a giant hydroid. Did you see that by any chance? Uh, I saw the hydroid. I didn't see the worm. Got it. So, not not sure. A bit to your right there. But we'll take a look at it. Um, Steve, do we want to stop here? Yes. Bridge nav. Hold position. Is that a good position for Stills Cam? Uh, yeah, I think that's pretty good. So we've got, um, we got actually, this is actually Getting not closer. a bad little pocket here. Um, base of some, maybe some really large sponge or coral in that channel there. Got some black corals, bathypathies, uh, another black coral. Uh, I think center yeah, up we were calling it yeah. maybe parentopathies or Ooh, nice. heteropathies earlier. Zoanthids. So the technique center on 4K and then tilt. So another another potential rock both target right collection over there. Yeah. Too, so the let's look at the biology first and then we'll go for the rocks. Sounds like a plan. Okay. Bio first. Geo second, at least this time. The rocks aren't going anywhere, right? <laughs> to be honest, neither are the corals. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say that. Rel relatively speaking, mm -hmm. the rocks are probably a little more stable. <laughs> Three meters up there, come down to about uh, 1.8 to 2. It'll stop yeah, that coral. Uh, something weird in the sediment there, the too, in between. In the stills cam was going when I was lower, it was right. going on the top. Oops. Ah. Sorry, Steve. That's a very strange uh, structure on the bottom of the zoanthid colony here. You can yell at me to zoom in or out on this 4K. Okay, are you, you seem to be zoomed in right now? I am. I've slowed the zoom down to two, so it's not so yeah, head banging. Better. It's still green though. I can. Uh, what is that arm fault on Herc? Is that the Okay. I'll, I'll uh, let you know what I want to look at here. So we're going to take a zoom at this. Okay. I'm going to take a zoom on the black coral and then over to the left of it afterwards. Okay, sounds good. Tammy, you can go ahead and zoom in. Ready? What is that, Steve? So this is a zoanthid. I'm really curious about this thing, though. It actually now is actually, uh, looks like a barnacle, an old, maybe dead barnacle. 
Um, but all the polyps are closed up on the zoanthid. Yeah. Good to know. I mean, it, it's likely that this animal uh, didn't form this skeleton here, but it's probably a really old bamboo coral stock or something like that. Really heavily colonized by fouling organisms, hydroids, zoanthids, trying to get up and feed into the higher currents around here. Great. Yeah, even the, it's, it's unusual to see the barnacles dead and foul too, but you know, they're just temporary members of the suspension feeding community. A bit overgrown. Okay, so then we've got some out. other critters here. We did sample one of these uh, stickopathies with very heavy air quotes around it since uh, there's some debate about whether these orange uh, curly cues are actually stickopathies or probably something in a different family. Okay, can you zoom in on that down? I do. And I'll try to... So he went. Looks good. I'll try to get it centered up in the Zeus as well. You can go for a zoom on the Zeus, Tammy. Should dual zoom action. on a rock somewhere, plenty of marbles to land on, bird perches. Yeah. Okay. Well, the before you get set up, um, that, that was a good enough zoom. I, I'd like to take a look in more detail at this colony in the lower left, okay. the yellow one over there. And then maybe it might be a bit easier to perch. Yeah, I would perch for that one. Okay. I was trying not to get sediment everywhere. If you uh, perch on a rock, that's... I've got some questions about the 4K camera. Um, is there, is that being broadcast through our satellite feed? Not currently. Yeah. Maybe sometime in the future, but currently that is not being broadcast out. It's an illegal pilot camera. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> it's in testing still, so we can put it out every now and then, but it's not a main camera. Got it. So we're currently testing that camera. It's not being broadcast, but perhaps some time in the, in the near future. While we're zooming in here, uh, I think I had some geo questions. I can't, it's sliding. While we finish up checking out some of the biology right here, I have a question about the rocks, Rebecca. Sure. They're really curious. They say when they look at the stream, so, uh, all the rocks look the same to them. You could use uh, forward <laughs> as well. So as what down. exactly are, are so we trying to... How do we identify that's the a one? A little bit of forward and a little bit of yeah, down. Yeah, um, that's a great question. <laughs> Otherwise, it'll just slide so down the rock. Yeah. For the purposes of this dive, or for most of the purposes of this dive, we're looking for this kind of black crust over there them. There you go. Um, sometimes when we've been pulling them and up then, from uh, deeper depths, purge, they're so volcanic material um, underneath. Um, we've also picked up some carbonate rocks. Okay. Uh, with that'll walk the back of the sub this around. crust and on it, um, and those are coming from shallower back. depths um, gotcha. and more associated with the reefs themselves. You need to use both. Um, and so, 
Well, sometimes we don't even know until we get them into the lab and kind of break them open a little bit. For example, in this one dive that we're currently on, we have a note specifically about a carbonate rock in our sample collection paperwork here. And then there are two other rocks we've also collected that we don't yep. necessarily know the specifics uh, on don't yet. Lock it. Been a little lateral left. But if it's not super sedimented yeah, yeah. and it has this right seemingly black crust on it, See where you're that's what we're there interested on in grabbing. On your bumper and bow. Got it. Yeah. So there are visual cues um, when we're looking for rocks. Forward a little more. We're looking for that dark color, not heavily sentimented, and Depending on the Z bias. not attached, right? So that we yeah. can actually pick it up. And then once on board, uh, the team uh, has the ability to looks do... Looks like they have the Z bias pretty... A closer look. <laughs> ...balanced, so you don't need a lot of down, just a little. Probably more forward in this case. To determine you can see where you're what it might possibly be. Bumping against the rock bubble. Crusty rocks. Crusty rocks. And then I think lastly, the plan is to, you know, cut them open and get better a better understanding of what you're looking at. Is that right? I mean, I've, I've heard talk like of the rock saw. Up against your yeah. I want to use that. Bumper, <laughs> and you're giving it right. forward, it'll try and... So, uh, the, cutting them open is a great way to kind of better understand what's going on. Um, that way we can also see the thickness of the crust. Um, and that can give us beautiful. somewhat of an age estimate for how long they've been accumulating um, on the seafloor, which is pretty cool. Cool stuff. So there you go. You want I can tilt up just a bit? Ready? All right. Now we're uh, zooming in on some biology. The here. other cheat there I use is uh, I rack forward and back instead of tilting. What kind of coral is this, Steve? This is a really interesting colony. Um, I'll tell you now, we're going to probably want a sample of this, uh, at least a piece of it. But it's a plexorid, uh, but it has some interesting characters that could put it in one of maybe three different <laughs> genera. So those are always kind of the interesting ones to sample if it's not immediately recognizable. Um, you kind of have to work through a process of elimination. And in, in this case, I can't eliminate maybe three or four possible genera. So I think we're going to do a collection of this, uh, just a branch of it, and uh, right, yeah. stow it. What did you call it again, Steve? It's a plexorid. Plexorid. Plex, P-L-E-X-A-U-R-I-D. Plexoridae is the family. Plexoridae. It seemed to have some interesting associates, too. Yeah, it's a... It's it's tough to tell with some of these. Um, so the associate is a type of brittle star. Um, this one has uh, some characteristics that you know, align with a, a genus called Paramaricea, but it also has some characteristics that align with a genus called Swiftia, um, namely the uh, pale kind of... Uh, axial portion of the skeleton and branches. The polyps are very, um, have a very different coloration entirely. So I'm very curious that there's uh, Swifty is usually red um, or pink uh, or white, but um, there's also been Swifty that's been known to have yellowish polyps too. If you look at the skeleton, you know, kind of the branches part of the skeleton looks very white or pale, yeah. and the polyps look very vibrant yellow. So that that um, kind of coloration, even though it's not really reliable for identification in all cases of plexorids, it's, it's important to note uh, because the the color of it will change entirely when it's preserved and become like dark green or purple or blue. Oh my goodness. Uh, yeah. That's when, really different. Yep. They get really, really different colored when they're preserved. 
So it's important to note colors in life. And we've also got a couple of uh, anemones here, right here. Um, we used to call these ring anemones, but it's not really anatomically correct anymore. But ring anemones, they would form their their petal disc would form a ring around the branch, and that's how they would hold on. But that's kind of cool. Yeah. Probably gonna try and go somewhere in here for less. It's for the anemones. Do they? How do they get there? Do they settle and grow on there? I just, I wonder about the the pathway for some of these associates. <laughs> yeah, they uh, they assuming they settle from outside the surrounding area. The you know as a larvae they'll settle. Mm -hmm. But oftentimes, if you find one in a colony, you may find multiple. So there might be other reproductive. Uh, modes that it uses just to move within a colony, but generally they uh, they like to attach to bare skeleton, so damage to the portion of the colony or something. So for our viewers, it looks like we're setting up to take a sample here and get some really good imagery to carefully document the color of this particular colony. Are we ready to sample? Yeah. Yeah, so I, I think if you can, anything from here on over, yeah, I think it's going to be a forward bio box. Does that sound, uh, something over here, cutting something over here sound okay? That way we can get a piece of the arm of the brittle star for uh, identification too. Which will grow back, a lot of echinoderms have uh, regenerative capacities. We saw that a few days ago with the Brisingid that had the arm regrowing. Yeah, that was a cool shot. Yeah, once you see something in scale, it actually looks remarkably uh, smaller than you expect. Mm -hmm. When the um, manipulator came into view there. <laughs> uh, no, it's still there. It's, this is one of the anemones here, and there's another anemone here. Yeah. I'm going to try and cut there or something, or maybe there. got some curiosity about the anemones and the brittle stars and associates in general. Once they uh, find a good home, do they become sessile? The brittle stars? Uh, yeah. yeah, they don't move very much. They can, you can find them free living, but it's very rare. Uh, so living on the rock, uh, very rare. They typically will stay around their colony. So when they find a good place, yep. that's that. Home, kind of like forever me home. Kind of like me in Los Angeles. <laughs> Do the polyps stay open um, when we collect them and they get? Do you ever see the polyps open, or do they kind of all close? Um, they, they, they will close. Uh, there are ways to get them to open again. Uh, if you keep them cold in, uh, in water, they will come out 
uh, but usually they stay closed for the most part. Yeah, I think that, that looks good. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's going to be fibrous uh, skeleton. I'm not sure what, what's caught there, if it's the arm or the branch. It's not floaty, so it should stay. Yeah, my first thought was that the brittle star was going to take off, like, I'm out of here. <laughs> No, they, they're remarkable, yeah. A lot of associates for these corals, they'll, they'll stay despite, you know, pretty much anything. They want to stay on their coral. It's a bit of a territoriality thing. There you go, I think you got it now. There's actually numerous uh, anemones on there as well. That's a great piece, thanks. Um, I think we can store that in the forward box. Yeah, it can go in either section. A shout out and a thank you to Steve for explaining the characteristics of coral. Very, very valuable. This is NA137. Dash. What's the number for this? Sample? This is 45. 45. It doesn't matter. Anywhere. <laughs> it does have a plug, right? Somewhere? <laughs> I don't know, but I think that might be important. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> well, do you want to go to A then, in case, so it doesn't go through a hole? No, it's not going to okay. go through the hole. It's uh, it's more just the temperature. Gotcha. There it is. All right, uh, while you're there, can you uh, take a Niskin too in this area? Nicely done. So y'all just heard Steve ask for a Niskin. I think that's a fancy term for a water sample. Yeah, so <laughs> Niskin bottle is a uh, invention uh, by a guy named Niskin. Uh -huh. I think, uh, what was it, invented the 50s? Something like that. Not yet. Dealer's choice. Yeah, so Niskin bottles patented in uh, 1966, but it's based on an earlier model. Um, called a Nansen bottle, which basically is a way to take a water sample at depth, named for Friedhof Nansen, who is probably one of the most interesting people that's ever lived in oceanography. If you don't know anything about him, look him up. He's kind of a renaissance man of tor sorts, Dip diplomat and uh, oceanographer, epic uh, mustache aficionado. <laughs> Rebecca, was that prior sample uh, zero four five? Yes. Great, thanks. Anson, I've only heard of Niskin, so thanks for that little bit of. Yeah. Is this him? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. How do you pronounce that first name? Friedhof. Friedhof. Friedhof Nansen. Friedhof yeah. Nansen. That is, that is a stash. <laughs> that is a gentleman's stash. 
I yeah. mean, he looks like a character. Wonder if there's a uh, biography out there somewhere. <laughs> yeah, if, if there isn't a, a biography or a story about his life, I'm sure there will be soon because uh, it's a pretty extraordinary uh, life he led from like being an Arctic explorer to being an oceanographer to being a, a diplomat uh, through the, I think during the early parts of the precursor to the UN, the League of Nations. Um, yeah, it's, it's a storied career. Hey Steve, do you want to sample or look at anything else? Was there that rock uh, around the corner? Yeah, there was actually a rock right on top of it uh, that I had my eye on. Right on top, like at this same. Yeah, you're you're right on. It's right underneath you, I think. So if you oh, back okay. off, um, they might be able to see it. But Ooh. I'm not sure if it was loose or not. But it looked really loose. If not, there's one off to the far right that was be a good candidate too. Is it um, that guy? That guy. Yeah. Right there. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That looks like a good candidate. Realistically, either either of these might work, but this one is nice and sediment free, so I'm hoping. Uh, yeah. Come on. Again. Come on, rock. For those of you that were asking, how do we identify a good rock candidate? Thing? Sediment free and looking for that dark color indicator. Crusty. Crust. <laughs> Crusty and sediment free. Oops. Mm. Follow up question on the associates in the coral colony. Um, do associates leech off the coral colonies like parasites or do they provide benefits? Um, it's a. Uh, that might be a, uh, might be a no. Yeah. Go for the well, one just a little bit down slope. Yeah, might as well let you have it out. Uh, yeah, it's to the to the right. To the. Uh, well, right. let's let's poke this one first and see what we got here, right Is here. That one, okay. And mm -hmm. then uh, and then we'll go to the right. Just give it a flying poke down. Sorry. All right. Yeah. So uh, off to the, you know, I guess forward now. Um, there was another rock on the other side of this outcrop with the, the things we were looking at. Okay. Possible candidate. But. Uh, what was the question? Um, for, uh, do associates leech off colonies like parasites, or do they provide benefits to the coral colonies? Yeah, so it's a um, it's a commensal relationship. So they really don't have any positive or negative benefit. Although there's some suspicions that um, there might be a benefit to the coral. Well, so. There are some positive benefits, but there are probably no negative uh, benefits for either of them. The corals get a nice, uh, you know, cleaning once in a while due to the kind of movement of the brittle star arms there. I want to get closer. Yeah. That's, That's a no. Okay. All right. Well, let's uh, keep looking around.